What's going on, Glorifiers? This is Dear Glory. I'm Mariah Elise. I'm back. I'm ready. I know it's been a break, but let's get to it. Today, we're breaking down the advisor-collector relationship, a topic that I found really crucial for anyone serious about building a meaningful art collection. If you're new to collecting, or even if you feel like you have a grip on it and collecting is, you know, coming natural to you these days, I still think you need an advisor, okay? If you're looking to expand your collection, finding the right advisor can truly make all the difference, trust me. But it's not like, it's not just about finding someone with knowledge and expertise, right? It's about finding the right person, the right fit for you. So let's get into it. You know what you need to do. Keep on watching until the end. If you like this video, if you're rocking with it, press that thumbs up like it subscribe you know do all of the things if you're really trying to get down go to my patreon join our patreon community the dear glory collective where we get deeper and deeper we talk more personably we have a book club going on yeah anyway check that out the link is in the description of this video so yeah let's get to it let's start with the basics what does an art advisor actually do at its core an art advisor's role is to be your guide through often complex and sometimes intimidating journey of art collecting. If you've tried to interact with galleries, if you've tried this journey, this path, you know it can be a little intimidating, right? Most people find even stepping into a gallery, the quietness of it, just being alone most of the times, it's intimidating. But anyway, finding an advisor can really help you with that. Their responsibility go far beyond simply helping you pick out the work, pick out the pieces. An art advisor's job involves several areas, okay? Number one, navigating the art market. The art market is vast, and it can be difficult to navigate without the guidance of someone who spends their entire life, their every hour exploring it. Your advisor helps you understand what's worth investing in, how to spot trends, even though, you know, I say a thousand times, I don't think that you should follow trends necessarily all of the time, but I do think that you should understand trends, right? And they help you um, avoid potential pitfalls. They use their knowledge of current and historical market trends to make sure that your investments and the things that you buy are both smart and aligned with your personal goals and your personal tastes. Number two, the second key area an advisor focuses on is extensive research, reading, 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 looking, 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 always in the galleries, always at the museums, always at an artist studio, always reading articles, always just in the know. One of the most time consuming aspects of an art advisor's job is conducting extensive research. Now, this includes research on a multitude of artists, understanding their career trajectories, analyzing market data, and staying up to date on trends. I'm not saying when you work with the art advisor, they're going to know everything about everybody because there's way too many artists in the world to just kind of know the career trajectory and everything that every artist is doing, right? But they will have a really good grip on what's going on in the art world, in the art market, in the art ecosystem. Again, this includes researching a multitude of artists, understanding their career trajectories, analyzing market data, and staying up to date on what is going on, up to date on everything, up to date on what's happening in the auction market, up to date to what's happening in the gallery world, the museum world, the underground world, everything. This doesn't just mean staying up to date on general market trends. This also includes individualized research on on artists that you as a collector are specifically interested in. There might be an artist that you're interested in that your advisor has never heard of. Take a beat, give it a moment, give them some time to do the research and figure out what is going on with this artist. That's what your advisor is there for. You say, hey, I really like John Doe. The advisor's like, hmm, I've never heard of John Doe, but give me a second, give me a few days, give me a beat and let me really dig into who this artist is and I'm gonna come back to you with some research, okay? So it also includes that individualized research that you as a collector are interested in. Whether you have a particular artist in mind or a style you're drawn to, your advisor will dig deep into their background, their career trajectory and their market data to make sure that the artwork and the artist aligns with your collecting goals. This research is essential in making informed decisions and making sure that the artwork selected 
is aligned with what you said your overreaching goals are. Now, if you just love the work and your advisor, your advisor is not going to say don't buy it. Buy what you love for sure. But your advisor is there to help you navigate through what you actually like and what you are actually buying. Number three, authenticity and provenance. You want to make sure that the piece is authentic. Making sure the piece is authentic is critical. Advisors often have access to resources and experts who can verify the authenticity and the provenance. Um, if you've been following and you understand, and provenance is the history of ownership. Okay, provenance equals history of ownership of work, which is crucial in maintaining the value and the legitimacy of your collection. Now, some provenance might be incredibly short, especially if you're not buying for, especially if you're buying from a gallery or you're buying directly from the artist, the provenance might be directly from the artist. But when you really start buying things on the secondary market, are you buying from uh, an estate or you're buying from a personal collection? It might have been in three different collections. This artwork might have been in three different collections. And you want to know that like you want to know where the art has lived. It does something for the value. Now, let's move on to number four. Number four, negotiation. Negotiating the purchase price of an artwork is another key role of the advisor. They understand the art of negotiation and they can often secure a better deal than you're going to be able to do by yourself, right? That's going to save you money and it's going to make sure that you're, you're paying a really good and a fair price. That's crucial because I've seen some crazy stuff in this art world. I've seen people trying to sell dealers, multiple dealers trying to sell the same artwork, the same piece um, for $60,000. It's, it's, for, it's for sale for 60 grand over here. It's for sale for 70 grand over here. And I'm looking at the price like that's insane. That's crazy. Let me find out how much this is really valued at. Let me let me find out what this is really worth and find out that it's 20 grand. Like 60 to 20 is a lot, right? So your art advisor, your job is to navigate that. I mean, that's a crazy uh, scenario, but your their, their job is to navigate that and make sure that you're paying the right price for the work that you're seeking. Let's move on to number five, logistics and management. Now, logistics and management is something that I do not like to deal with, but it is a part of the job. Okay, an advisor can handle the more technical aspects like shipping, um, insurance and storage, they're going to make sure that your artworks are properly cared for both during transit. And also once it's in your collection, it could be a headache. It's something that I don't really advise the collector to deal with themselves. I've dealt with some things happening. I've dealt with someone sending completely completely sending the wrong artwork <laughs> and needing it back and you know the crazy things happen okay so just make sure that your advisor is also handling the shipping and handling they're advising you on insurance and they're also handling um the installation of a when it's in your house so we have that we have an advisor's job involves these key areas again navigating the market number one number two extensive research number three authenticity and provenance number four negotiation and number five logistics and management now if i'm missing something art advisors you guys key in let me know in the comments um if you guys have any thoughts so far go ahead and let me know in the comments all right now the next thing you want to figure out actually you know what it's one of the first things you want to figure out are you a good fit to work with your advisor is your advisor a good fit to work with you are you a good fit for one another compatibility okay are you guys compatible are you compatible with your advisor one of the most important considerations when choosing an art advisor is whether you and the advisor are actually a good fit to work together this relationship is a deeply deeply personal and sig personal relationship and it can significantly inf influence the works that you buy they, they really help you make choices and you might look back and say, I hated those choices. Or you might look forward and say, you know what? I'm really glad I worked with this specific person um, because they understood my vision. They made sure they keyed in on my vision, on my mission, on why I'm collecting. And they really helped me align my collecting journey with my goals. Okay. So you really want to be compatible with your advisor. You want to do three things. Number one, you want to have a shared vision and an understanding. And when I say you want to have a shared vision, you want to make sure that your advisor gets on your page and that they can they can get on your page. OK, your advisor needs to have a good understanding of your motivations for collecting. Are you collecting primarily for investment 
personal enjoyment or to support emerging artists. One of those, you know, there are many other reasons that's going to help shape their strategies. They need to understand your reasoning for collecting, which means you need to understand your reasons for collecting. Now, if they're a good advisor and you're just beginning, they're going to help you understand your reason for collecting. Or you'll develop some sense of understanding for your reason to collecting over time. Every collector doesn't have to focus on the same thing. You don't have to pigeonhole yourself, right? For example, my learning journey is in contemporary living artists. And I particularly enjoy working with collectors who share passion for supporting artists who are actively creating today. Artists that we can reach out and touch, who we can talk to, we can that they are constantly putting on shows, we can go to their shows. If your focus aligns with mine, we're likely a really great match. I don't focus on it's a lot of things I don't focus on. <laughs> so if I'm in this one little area, I probably want to work with people who also are in that area with me. I'm also always willing to expand, of course, but this area that I'm in of my learning journey, working with contemporary living artists, it makes sense because of my practice to work with collectors that wants to collect contemporary living artists. It makes sense for us to work together. Our compatibility is, is great. So make sure you're compatible with your art advisor. Make sure there's you guys have some of the similar goals. And to help further determine if you and I would be a good fit to work together, I've personally created a compatibility quiz. Now, this quiz is designed to give me a better understanding of your goals as a collector and see how my philosophy and my approach aligns with your collecting um, aspirations. Now, once you complete that quiz, if it looks like we're a good match, we're a good fit, we can schedule a 15 minute call, dive a little bit deeper into your goals and discuss how we can start or continue your journey as a collector together. I'm really hoping to connect with more of you soon. Over the last few years, I've connected with quite a few of you guys and it's been a really enriching journey. Um, yeah, so the link is in my description if you wanna take that compatibility quiz and find out if we're a good fit to actually work together. Get on a 15 minute call, see if we're a good fit and start working together. All right, number two, advisor specialty. We just talked about this a little bit, but every advisor should have a solid foundation in art and even art history, okay? They all can have areas that they're specializing in. It's important to know what your advisor is specializing in. Um, if your primary interest is in Renaissance art, you want to work with an advisor who specializes in Renaissance art. Uh, if you are loving contemporary art and you want to collect contemporary art, well, you want to focus on working with an advisor that focuses on contemporary art, right? So, yeah, we just talked about that. Um, just make sure you're compatible in, in those areas of your interests, all right? Number three, advisor's bias. It is essential to determine whether your advisor has your best interest at heart. Some advisors might have biases to our certain artists or galleries, possibly because of their relationship, which is easy. You know, within the industry, it's easy. You want, but you want an advisor who is transparent with their recommendations, make sure that their advice is based on your goals and not their relationships. <laughs> you want to make sure that your advisor is making recommendations based on your goals and not their connections or their biases, okay? Not their connections. So those three things, when we're looking for compatibility, number one, we're sharing vision and understanding. Number two, what is that advisor's specialty? And number three, the advisor's bias, vision, specialty, objectivity. They have to be objective. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about, pricing structures and payment arrangements. It's a big one. Pricing structures and payment arrangements. Okay, this is a lot of you guys have questions about this. I've seen a few questions in the comments. So let's talk about a few different ways that art advisors structure their fees. Understanding this will help you understand that you're getting the value for your money. Okay. Some people may not agree with this. There are no written rules. I mean, there are written rules, but, you know, it's an unregulated market, so people kind of move in a way that they want to move. But in my findings, in my understandings, and the things that I've seen around me and, and what I've seen to be ethical, these are the three ways that I find to be the best ways to structure or to look or work with advisors who structure their pricing in this way. There are a few different structures. Right now, we're going to talk about three, okay? We're talking about the commission base, the hybrid model, and the retainer based. Let's get into the commission. 
The most common payment structure is commission-based, where the advisor takes a, a purchase price of the artwork. Now, typically, this is going to range from 10% to 20%. Some people say it ranges from 5 to 20%. The idea here is that the advisor's compensation is directly tied to the value of the art that they're helping you acquire. Let me say that again. The advisor's compensation is directly tied to the value of the art that you are acquiring. However, okay, it's important to know that for higher value pieces, the commission percentage might decrease. For example, you buy a $100,000 artwork. That might only incur a 10% commission. Whereas if you buy a $10,000 artwork, that might incur a 20% commission. You see what I'm saying? 100,000, 10%, 10,000, 20%. The higher the cost of the artwork, the lower the cost of the commission. You may be able to take into consideration here that the advisor may have scored you a discount on the artwork that you're requiring through their relationship with the gallery or the artist or the negotiation phase, whatever it may be, which kind of offsets that commission that you might be paying them. So for instance, if you buy a $100,000 artwork through their negotiation or their relationship, they got you 10% off and then you pay them 10%, you're saving money. So keep that in mind. Number two, the hybrid model. Many advisors now often hybrid payment systems, such as combining commission with hourly rate or retainer. This could be really useful if your advisor is doing a whole lot of groundwork, researching artists and attending galleries on your behalf or extensive time educating you. I'm a fan of the hybrid model. Okay, let me tell you, people come to you and they want you to do all type of research for them but you spent all this time, three, three years researching for them and they never bought anything. So you never made your commission. You've wasted a lot of time. And the reality of it is we all have to live. We all have a livelihood. We all have to value our work. So the hybrid payment system, combining the commission with an hourly rate or a retainer, this could be really useful. It could work, right? You, again, if your advisor is doing a ton of groundwork, researching artists for you, attending galleries on your behalf, standing, spending extensive time educating you. For instance, if your advisor is conducting detailed market analysis or managing your large scale collection or your collection in general, the hybrid model is going to make sure that they're um, fairly compensated. And, you know, we want to make sure that advisors are fairly compensated for their time and their effort in the education that they're giving you and the research that they're doing. This combination of hourly and commission, um, our hourly and retainer fees can really establish a great long-term relationship. It becomes a really fruitful relationship, right? Uh, it becomes a really good relationship, a good long-term relationship to where they're understanding your interest. This consistency is beneficial as the advisor becomes more familiar with your preferences, your collection strategies over time, okay? And it's going to lead to better recommendations. It's going to lead to you having a more cohesive collection because they, they've spent time understanding you. You don't really want to work with an advisor one-off. You really want to have a good ongoing relationship with your advisor so that they understand you. Over time, they just get to know you more. They understand you better. And they are able to make quicker and better recommendations on what they believe you would like and what they believe you should add to your collection. When an advisor's compensation is not solely tied to commission, they're also less likely to push for a sale that might not be in your best interest. Instead, they're focusing on giving you unbiased advice and, and giving you artworks that truly align with your goals rather than the artworks that's going to, you know, offer the highest commission. This way they're putting in the legwork and they have integrity in what they're offering you to buy. Now, you want to make sure that they are spending time getting to know you and that the legwork they're putting in is worth the money that you're spending and that you do. You want to move forward. You don't want to just stay in a research-based space. So, yeah, just make sure you keep that balance. Okay. Number three, there's the retainer base. A retainer model is another, you know, great model. Some people agree with that. Some people don't. Where the collector is paying a set fee on a monthly basis. It could be a great way to secure ongoing support. And your advisor can focus on, again, what's best for your collection rather than pushing for sales. It allows you to be an ongoing client, right? You're a client that they're locked in for. 
they're locked in with, they know you're going to be working with them. So they're thinking about you all of the time. Someone who has a model like this, they might not even take on that many clients a year. They might take on five clients a year and they know how much they're getting paid per month. They know that you're locked in for the entire year and they know for this year, they know your entire art budget for the year and they're focused on that. They know what your goals are for the year. They they're thinking about you specifically, you know, and whoever their other, probably a small number of clients are, they're thinking about this group of clients for the year in terms of building your collection and managing your collection. It, it provides them with, of course, financial stability, but it also provides you with the opportunity to have continuous and unbiased advice. With the retainer, you have the peace of mind that the advisor is available when you need them without the need to really negotiate, renegotiate fees with every interaction. So this can be especially valuable for an active collector who requires ongoing advice and ongoing support. And you're not tapping in every now and then like, hey, can we hop on the phone? I have an artist that I want you to look at. And then you get a bill for $100 or you've been on the phone for three hours. Then you get a bill for $300 because it's $100 an hour or something like that. No, you have a retainer. So you are probably also obsessed with collecting art. And you always have thoughts and you always have questions and you don't want to have to like quantify every email and every phone call that you hop on. You want it to be taken care of. So again, this could be especially valuable for an active collector who requires ongoing advice, ongoing support. Your advisor is dedicated to your collection over time and it's going to allow for a more strategic approach. Um, to building that more cohesive and valuable collection. This model also makes sure that your advisor is available to you for that ongoing support. Like we said, for acquiring new works, managing your existing collection, or navigating market changes. When choosing an advisor, it's important to discuss these payment structures up front and choose the one that best fits your needs and your collecting goals. The next thing we're going to talk about is transparency ethics and securing your advisor, which we kind of just talked about. Transparency and ethics are crucial in any advisor client relationship. Here's what you need to keep in mind. These three things. Number one, transparency in fees, ethical considerations. Number two, and number three, securing your advisor, which we just talked about. Number one, transparency and fees. Your advisor should be completely transparent about their conflicts of interest. For example, some advisors may take a commission from both you or the artist and the gallery, which will and can and does create a conflict. It's really crucial that you have a written agreement outlining exactly how they're compensated. This makes sure that everything they do is in your best interest, that they're not double dipping. I really would recommend that you avoid working with advisors that double dip. Some people might disagree. I don't care. You don't do that. That's not cool. You, you're double dipping all over the place. Now, it's a moral code more than anything, okay? So no double dipping. Make sure you have a written agreement with your advisor and know how they're getting paid. Just outline everything. Outline everything. Let's protect everybody. Number two, ethical considerations. The ethics of your advisor are equally important as everything else. It's generally advised to avoid situations where advisors have a stake in the sale of the artwork. All right. Now it's easy to get in a situation like that because advisors a lot of times curate and you can end up in a situation to where you're advising someone and you might be advising someone on building a collection, but then at the same time you're curating a show and you're talking to the collector. You still want to keep, you want to be able to, you want your, your, you want your advisor to be able to separate interests, right? If your advisor is curating a show and your advisor is also managing your collection and managing the decisions that you make, if your advisor knows that your interests don't align with the show that they're curating, that you're curating, you don't connect the two. Okay. That's ethics. Don't connect the two. If you think that they honestly and truly might be interested, have a conversation with them about it. You need to make sure that your advisor doesn't have this, a stake in the sale of an artwork or they're not making a biased decision and presenting this artwork to you because they have a stake in the sale of the artwork. Okay. I hope that made sense. <laughs> Even if they say, I'm not going to double dip, I'm advising you to get this artwork, but because I'm curating the show, 
you don't have to pay the fee. You don't have to pay your typical commission. Okay, even if they don't double dip, you still need to make sure that they're advising you to get it for the right reasons, for your interests, because they understand your collecting goals. So make sure that your advisor is interested in your needs and can separate the two if they're in a situation like curating an exhibition and also manage your collection, managing your collection. Number three, securing your advisor. We just spoke about this. Consider securing your advisor with a retainer. Some people disagree. Again, it's a good thing to secure. We already spoke about it. We don't have to go deeper into it. It's about building a partnership based on trust where both um, parties are valued and invested in the collection. If you want to secure them in other ways by saying, hey, I want to work with you for the next six months, blase, blase, you, you can you can secure them for a period of time um, through their retainer. So secure your advisor. Okay, so Magnus Resch. I don't know if you guys know him. Um, he's pretty notable in his writings and his thoughts and um, in the thoughts that he brings into the art world, the market research that he does, the research period that he does. Um, he does a lot of research based on data. Um, I'm a data girl. I really enjoy data. I, I didn't realize until I was an adult that I enjoy data because you couldn't get me to enjoy it in high school or college. Or, but now that I'm actually like into a world that I really enjoy, um, data means a lot to me. And Magnus Resch, he really focuses on um, data points and, and bringing a lot of um, research together to understand what is actually happening in the art world. And I think it's very useful because... There's not much information out there that um, that's analytical about the art world, right? Like there are a lot of thoughts and a lot of opinions, but there are not many analyt um, there are not many analytics. So I do appreciate his perspective. I bring him up because if you're looking for a great read to deepen your understanding of art collecting and working with an advisor, just art collecting period, I really advise you read How to Collect Art um, by Magnus Resch. It it talks about building your collection and, and, and building it with confidence. It's a really insightful read. I read a lot. And like I said, his books have become some of my favorites to reference and refer to. And they're really great reminders of some of the things that we already know. Um, but it allows us to expand the things that we don't know. Because like I said, he's a highly researched guy. He he just does a lot of research. He, like, he works with a lot of people. He does a lot of interviews. He texts in a lot of information. And then he gives that information back to us. And I really enjoy him as a thought leader and as a thinker. Uh, so, yeah, I think you guys should read that book, How to Collect Art by Magnus Rush. Let's see. I think I have it. I'll show you what it looks like. Here's the book. I don't know if it's in focus, but um, here's the book. Yeah, it's, it's a really great read. It's... It's a little on the thick side. The words aren't too big. <laughs> but he goes through some really cool things that I think would be really helpful for you. I have a link in the description for you guys who actually want to purchase it. So, yeah, give this book a chance. In fact, we'll be reading this book in my Patreon um, chapter by chapter and having discussions. If you want to join the conversation and get involved in our weekly discussions, you can sign up for my Patreon at the link in the description. So, yeah. We can read this together. We can read a lot of books together. You guys can nerd out directly with me. I would be really happy to do that with you guys. So yeah, How to Collect Art by Magnus Resch. Links in the description. The last thing we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk the do's and the don'ts. Okay, the do's and the don'ts. And actually most of these come from Magnus Resch, okay? And some of them from me, but most of them from him. The do's and the don'ts that can, impact your advisor collector relationship number one do have a written agreement it's essential to have a written agreement outlining your advisor services and fees this protects both parties and makes sure makes certain makes positive that the expectations are positive from the beginning i mean i've seen some people get intimidated by agreements and contracts but i don't understand it it's weird to me um, agreements should protect you both. So yes, make sure you have a written agreement. Number two, don't allow conflicts of interest. Be cautious of any um, situation where your advisor may have a conflict of interest, taking a commission from you and the gallery. Okay. In this situation, you want to make sure that payments are always handled separately. And what I mean by that is if you are, um, if your advisor is curating a show, 
via a gallery with the gallery pay the gallery directly all right pay the gallery directly but your advisor should they should advise you to do that to pay the gallery directly um yeah just you know just just make sure you guys are extremely transparent make sure your your advisor is very transparent with you that's that's so important um et ethical and and moral um being ethical and having morals in this world especially in our world and in in just life period <laughs> as a human being is is just important so Make sure you're working with an ethical advisor. Maintain transparency and trust. Now, number three, do value your advisor's time. Please advise, please, please value your advisor's time. Okay. If you find yourself constantly seeking advice from an advisor, seeing an artist for them to review, or you need like detailed market insights, please remember that that's the advisor's job. And although we all love art and we all want to talk colors and rainbows and art and we all want to have these conversations, they likely probably really enjoy talking about it and talking to you as a person. It is still their job and it is still their career. For you, you might be simply having a conversation about an artist. For them, they're engaging about they're engaging in an aspect of their job. Okay? So send in a quick DM. Can sometimes get answered because a dm is really casual right they just might answer your question they, they might especially if you have a relationship but when you start asking for like market analysis and you start asking like real questions and needing real opinions and they have to like go dig for the answer and, and look that's a lot so do value their time and express interest in becoming um a client express that interest instead of just constantly throwing these questions to them about art you know we all love talking about art but you have to you you do value their opinion um because you keep asking them questions so it's probably time for you guys to work together that's not just serving to you all right number four do not bypass your advisor one of the worst things you could do is cut your advisor out of the deal i see it happen way too often it ain't cool it's not cool if they've done their job in pitching an artist and facilitating a, collect, a connection, or even if you reached out to them to get further information about an artist and for them to dig deeper into the artist and make sure that the artist is good for your collection, make sure, make sure you are paying them. Now, and that's, that's up to the advisor too, to start that transactional relationship, to make that conversation transactional. Um, anyway, they, you know what I'm trying to say, okay? Don't bypass the advisor once they give you advice approaching the artist or gallery directly to avoid paying the advisor after you sought their advice it's it's unethical and it can damage your reputation in the art world and you know you don't want a bad reputation in the art world okay so yeah those are the do's and the don'ts in the art advisor collector relationship those are some of the things that i recommend and man i didn't realize I'm looking at the time. I've been talking for 40 minutes. But I want you guys to really understand the relationship. Um, it's essential to building a successful um, a successful art collection. It's about more than just finding the right work. It's about finding the right advisor, fostering a partnership based on trust, transparency, and mutual respect, and making sure that you're making the right decisions for your collection. If you are a collector looking to work with an advisor, I encourage you again to take my compatibility quiz in the description below. This will help you determine if we're a good fit to work together. After the quiz, we can schedule a 15 minute call, discuss your goals and see how, you know, we can start or continue your journey collecting together. Don't forget to check out my art collecting starter checklist, which is perfect for those just beginning their collection journey or if you've been doing it for a while, the link for that is also in the description download that i'm also really excited to um i'm really excited to announce my upcoming webinars and master classes i'm really excited because it's beyond it, it's and now we can go beyond youtube you know a little bit more and have these webinars these quick 30 minute webinars and also these deep dive master classes um so on September 18th from 7 to 7.30 Eastern, we're going to be having a webinar called Introduction to Art Collecting. That's free. I really encourage you guys to come to that.
Now, the master class, which is a lot longer, I would love for you to come to that as well. It's a deeper dive. It's two hours. It's going to provide you with essential strategies to navigate your journey as an art collector with confidence. And it's from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's on a Saturday. And that one we're going to dig a lot deeper than we do um, than the webinar. The webinar is a short, introductory, 30 minutes, free um, we're going to get some information off, but if you really want to come deep or you really want to go deep, come to the masterclass. If you, you know, if you want to receive an email every week um, to know what's going on, to get a reminder of these videos that we're posting, get a reminder of what's going on, make sure you join the newsletter. Join the newsletter. Link is also in the description. I've told y'all to do a lot of things. Sign up for the webinar, download the art the introduction to art collectors checklist guide uh join the patreon look do one of those things will be good for you do one of those things <laughs> we can consult you could be a part of the community where it's a lot of us talking you can come to a free webinar <laughs> i got some options for y'all so yeah y'all you know just take advantage of all of these resources that we have and that we're giving you guys. Um, I really enjoy doing this. I really love talking to you. So thank you for being here. We never celebrated. We're still celebrating 10,000 subscribers. 10,000 of you want to really just like listen to art business, art ecosystem, nerd stuff. So yeah, that that's cool. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys. Um, Y'all keep on a path to glory. I'm Mariah Elise. This is Dear Glory. And um, I'm out. Love y'all. Bye.